But would you use alternate pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Well, perhaps not to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this. Would you use alternate no. pronouns? And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are the constructions, they're artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues whose viewpoint I do not share. And Bill yeah. C-16 is actually not about cisgender people. It's about protections for transgender people. And that's not, you know, it's not about Jordan Peterson. So, and, you know, we should have people learning to listen more. We have two ears and one mouth for a very good reason. When things get political, I like to ask who benefits and who gets to decide the rules of the game. So, you know, mostly with this Peterson controversy, which is really just a small drama, a tempest in a teapot, you know, he could just get over learning to program a few pronouns into his phone. By the way, I only have half a dozen or so that I actually use on an everyday basis. So it's not all that difficult. Professor think, Peterson, sorry, you know, Professor Peterson, good job because I think Professor Peterson wants to, to get in on that. Yeah, well, kindness is the excuse that social justice warriors use when they want to exercise control over what other people think and say. So, you know, if we're bandying back and forth uh, our, our differences in values, you know, um, I, I would say that the highest possible value is truth and that uh, one of the concomitants is that is that is that we need stringent protection for freedom of speech so that we can utter the truths that we see fit. And I think that that's a, a value that's much higher than, than kindness, for example. I mean, there's lots of situations in life where, where kindness in the immediate present is not a, the appropriate way to, to react at all. But so, for example, I'll, when um, you discipline children, you often hurt their feelings in the short term so that they can learn to behave properly um, in the medium to long term so that their lives go well. And so this automatic assumption that the people on the social justice warrior side of the equation are motivated only by kindness when they're also clearly motivated by power is something I find completely untenable. And I don't think that Pete's solution to program my cell phone so that I can remember what names people need to be called is a reasonable solution at all. We're, we're actually supposed to now use electronic devices to bolster our ability to speak freely How in case we names, offend Jordan? someone. Is you get my point. It's like you're, you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on. So and that you, is what you should do. But you're you exercising think, your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think you, more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Ha. That these made-up pronouns of which there are many, dozens in fact, and there's no consensus on them. And that doesn't even begin to start a discussion about the use of the other kin pronouns, and you can look those up if you want, because if you can define your identity subjectively any way you want, then there's absolutely no reason that you can't claim a non-human identity. And you may not know, but in the LGBT uh, rainbow coalition, there is Q+, and the Q+, people include the other kids who claim a non-human identity, and they're arguing in that rainbow coalition that they have the same right to their, um, to their pronouns that everyone else does, and their pronouns include such things as wor worm self. You're not supposed just, to interrupt. Actually, I was just going to ask if you could go back to the point about the analogy. Uh, between uh, the racial slur and the and the I don't pronouns. think there's any analogy at all. But that's I think what the difference between hear I'm on. talking about compelled speech. There's a difference between saying that there's something you can't say and saying that there are things that you have to say. And I regard these made-up pronouns, all of them, as the neologisms of radical PC authoritarians. Do you understand that? And I don't. I'm not a fan of that sort of person. And the reason I'm not a fan of that sort of person is because I've done my homework. I've read everything I can get my hands on in the development of authoritarian political systems, and I know the literature inside out and backwards. And I am not going to be a mouthpiece for language that I detest. And that's that. <laughs> who I'm a great admirer of, once described an old religious idea, and that was that God ruled the world with two hands, right and left, mercy and justice. And the world couldn't survive if only mercy applied, because then no one would ever be encouraged to adopt the trappings 
and responsibilities of adulthood. You end up in a situation where you're forgiven for absolutely everything you do or fail to do. You're, you're, you're thrust into the Freudian nightmare of the Oedipal family where your utter uselessness is forgiven on the grounds of compassion and you end up living in your mother's basement until you produce fantasies huh, as a consequence of your squelched development of perhaps going out and shooting up a high school. Um, mercy in its excess produces pathology. Justice in its excess produces pathology too because people are not are not perfect and that means that we all fail when we attempt to do the things that we know that we should do and so being held to account for our failures has to be tempered by mercy but both principles have to apply justice means there's structure and rules and the people who abide by the structure and play by the rules and move towards the top win and mercy means we're forgiven our failures so that we can rise up and play again. But you can't have one without the other because the world falls apart if you do. And this is my problem with tolerance. Because tolerant people, first of all, let's say those who claim, proclaim the virtues of tolerance, believe that they're tolerant, but generally that's not the case. They just don't want to accept the responsibility that playing by the rules would bring.